Barry Silbert leaves second market, and will Japan take a bit flyer? Today is Friday, July 25, 2014, and the price of Bitcoin holds around $600. I'm Stephen Chun, and here's what's happening today in money and tech. Second Market's founder and CEO Barry Silbert has announced plans to step down as CEO of the New York-based company. In a company blog post, Silbert says, I have chosen to move on from day-to-day -day management of the private company fund businesses so that I can focus 100% of my energy on our digital currency business. My passion for Bitcoin is no secret and I feel it is the right time to make this transition. Silbert will remain as CEO of Second Market's parent holding company while Bill Siegel has been named the interim CEO of Second Market. E-commerce company Guilt Group is making some major staffing cuts, including at the executive level, in preparation for a rumor fall IPO. CMO Lizzie Francis and longtime Vice President Jyothi Rao has reportedly been stepping down as a result of a company restructuring, which may further delay the company's plan to reach a satisfactory threshold for an IPO in the near future. Former Goldman Sachs bonds trader Yuzo Kano has raised $1.6 million in funding to build new Japan-based Bitcoin exchange Bitflyer, filling the void left by the now-defunct Mt. Gox. As Kano explains, that's one less competitor for us, but it also left many Japanese with a very negative impression of Bitcoin. We already had a company then and felt it was up to us to rebuild the trust. Bitflyer has been live in the Japanese market since April and is also seeking additional international capital to hopefully launch in other markets outside of Japan before 2015. At the same time, a U.S. district court has blocked the impending auction of the Bitcoins.com domain name owned by Mt. Gox CEO Mark Karpelis due to an injunction issued against the exchange's parent company, Tebane. The injunction came in response to a request from fellow Bitcoin company CoinLab who feared that the sale of any Mt. Gox assets would ruin the chances of any final relief with their ongoing legal dispute with Tebane. Carpellis had hoped to generate more than $750,000 from the sale, which he indicated plans to use at least half to help pay back Mt. Gox creditors, with the remaining going to fund Tebane's operation until its new venture takes off. Money & Tech attended the two-day Coin Congress conference this week in San Francisco and had the opportunity to speak with several of the event speakers who presented their ideas for long-term growth and stability of the nascent digital currency industry. In particular, we got the chance to sit down with Perry Ann Boring about her newly formed Chamber of Digital Commerce and what she's doing with it to address the community need for strong public comment on the recent New York Bit License proposal. Find that interview along with more information on today's news stories at moneyandtech.com. And then stay tuned next week for more exclusive Coin Congress interviews coming soon. I'm Stephen Chun, and thanks for watching Money and Tech's daily news update.